to the awesome, brilliant, creative, dignified, eye-opening, funny, graceful, hardworking, incredible, joyous, king and queen making, leaning in more than enough, negotiating, optimistic, phenomenal, queenly, rising, sight-giving, tremendous, unique, victorious warrior, and last but not least, double for your trouble, Zenith Women. Great evening, Optical Women's Association. It is my honor and pleasure to be here with you this evening. To Dr. Beverly Bianas, my compassionate, beautiful, intelligent, and wise optimist, uh, optometrist, who, as you know, was my college roommate, thank you for inviting me to speak to your friends, your sisterhood, and your colleagues. I'm a living witness that Dr. Bianas has been using her eye-opening light bearer skills at least going back 39 years ago while at UC San Diego. She elevated me, refocused me and my vision away from distractions and moved me toward my chosen destiny just by sharing a room with me. Thank you, Optical Women's Association, for inviting me to share the blessing of this International Women's Day with you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Courtney, for bringing this together. I'm excited to share this evening with your community of optical professionals. I'm so proud to Zoom with each of you as we embark on this synergized journey with eyes wide open for a common good. That common good is to break the bias operating against women and at the expense of women. To make sure the issues that affect us women matter and to silence the irrelevant chatter, we must be unified, steadfast, and when necessary, speak louder. I submit to you that using our unified and steadfast power and even speaking louder is necessary to break the bias in this know-it-all, divided, new millennial, silo positioning, petty partisan, media managed, gadget inducing world we live in. Using our unified and steadfast collective power and sometimes speaking louder is also necessary for us to accomplish our part of the mission passed by baton to our generation in this era of nonstop lights, camera, and action for this technologically savvy Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, iPhone 13 costing over $1,000. You must be out of your mind, world. Hmm. Your Break the Bias theme is revelatory given the state of affairs in America and around the world today, particularly with this intentional persecution of women, devaluation of women's contributions and the all time high rate of sex trafficking. We call attention to these crises when we are unified and steadfast to make sure the issues that affect us women matter. And when necessary, yes, we speak up, we speak louder. We matter when we unify to break the bias in support of all women, regardless of ethnic background, socioeconomic status, dress size or shape, and even diversity and sexual orientation is not a green light to hate. We rise and soar from the ashes of bias when we're unified and steadfast because power is our honor. We collectively break the bias when we choose to bring others alongside of us and light the way or pay it forward instead of being divided and conquered or settling for heartless petty pawns of hate. If we set down our phones and stop multitasking long enough to pay attention, the quietness will indiscriminately teach us that we can also break the bias if we show and tell when we share with no bitterness to spare. Yikes! You may ask, how do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. Remember, when you were in grade school, you brought something to school to show off for show and tell. Well, 
it's now time for us to show and tell other women that they are good enough. Even if alone, they belong, whether they are at the front, at the back, at the top, at the bottom, wherever they can make a difference in the room, they have the power and the God-given right to Zoom. But what do we do if the bias is lurking below the radar? Not necessarily an easy to detect. How, how we do it is we go to try and pay attention to the details. How do we recognize it? Mm, I'm glad you asked for directions in a Zoom room full of women who don't mind asking or receiving directions. <laughs> to answer the question, the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave us a surefire way to I spy bias when he said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So to break the bias, it may require you to speak louder wherever bias is found, because it is our common enemy that has come to dim the light source within us or suffocate us all to forfeit our high call. It's like walking into a high rise building and standing next to the elevator and you see a fire extinguisher in the glass container. And on the glass printed in bold letters, it says, in case of an emergency, break the glass. Being afraid to speak up for yourself and others is equivalent to not breaking the glass with, to get the fire extinguisher while the fire is raging our way. In considering this type of boldness, we can even learn lessons from our children. I'm reminded of an experience back in spring of 2002, when we as a nation were still reeling from the initial shock, pain, and unbelievable de devastation of 9-11. I took my seven-year-old son, Brandon, to the Monterey, California Aquarium, Brandon, as a literal child with differences, always took time to go deeper than the surface. And so for this experience, it was no different. Brandon loved all the different colors of the fish, and he was very intrigued with the different sizes too. And so we ended up around a circular glass, a, a circular glass exhibit, excuse me, in the middle of the room. Brandon was captivated by the yellow tail fish and other exotic fish. As I stood there behind him, I saw him look up and look around. He turned to look at the man who was standing next to me and Brandon nudged me. And when I leaned in to hear, he said loudly in his baritone voice while pointing to the man in the turban, mom, why is everybody looking all over the place for Osama bin Laden when he's right here? And he pointed to the man. All the adults in earshot, including the man in the turban, stopped. Of course, my first thought was to climb underneath the exhibit, but that wasn't going to work. So I had to make this a teachable moment. I said, no, Brandon, this is a turban, which is a head wrap that is similar to a hat that you would wear and that we wear in our culture. It's a piece of clothing that men and women wear in different cultures. This is not Osama bin Laden. This is a nice man coming out to have a nice day at the aquarium like us. Just looked, he shrugged his little shoulders and said, well, I was just trying to help our president out. Or what about the time that Brandon and I took a trip to Washington DC and we took one of his classmates along, along with his mother. One afternoon, we decided to do sightseeing on the local bus and myself and Brandon and Cecile and Micah, we got on the bus and we were oohing and on at the things we saw and something captivated our attention that we did not hear Brandon sneeze. And so Brandon in his baritone voice said, well, I guess I'll bless myself. Yeah, he caught our attention then. That's why sometimes we have to speak louder. Another strategy to break the bias would involve a perspective change to honestly acknowledge the dynamics of decency, to start the conversation about how we can delight in our differences and use the power of collaborating for maximum effectiveness. But in this 2022 new vernacular, millennial XYZ code using short attention span world, 
that same strategy would read as Hashtag perspective change, hashtag start the conversation, and hashtag collaborate. But I warn the misguided, don't underestimate the power of a hashtag or the power of a, co a collective power of women. Because when we women unify like the hashtag combinations of a perspective change, starting the conversations and collaboration for any good thing, we leave a mark that can't be erased. And that's really how we break the bias with a threefold sucker punch. I stand before you today as a judge because I have a couple of situations in my life that gave me the opportunity to use my show and tell, break the bias strategies. I say opportunities because that's all the trouble is, right? If you dare to flip trouble on its head, it becomes a springboard for change, as in hashtag perspective change. And once you have a new perspective, you can start the conversation and then yes, you can collaborate around great changes that affect people's lives. As a child, when I witnessed my mother's struggles with mental illness while she battled denial, depression, and the demands of an overwhelmed Black single mother, I could only hope for a better life. As painful as it was watching my mother, a victim of domestic violence, try mightily to numb her senses as she settled for the hand-me-downs of wealthy employers and the leftovers of the no good, very men who used my mother to get to my two sisters and I. I knew I couldn't give up and come up at the same time. So to reach my childhood goals of escaping poverty and drug infested neighborhoods, I needed to do more than hope. I had to find strength to overcome the obvious. And it was, it was changing my perspective that helped me find my strength. I challenged myself to learn how to use lemons life sent me to make lemonade. I began to see my turbulent times differently by recognizing that nothing worth having is free. I realized that attending 10 schools and living in 23 houses and then being placed in foster care, yeah, it was meant to sabotage my success, but I chose to see it as the price I paid to be prepared to deal with people of all cultures and to learn how to think on my feet. I realized that I already had been given all the chances in the world to let my dreams die and become a, better, a vessel of bitterness by focusing on my own victimology, my parents' inadequacies, and the predatory behaviors of others. But I couldn't accept that fate and thrive because choosing bitterness would mean I couldn't get better. And it would mean I only saw the disabilities in my darkness not my ability to cope in chaos, survive insurmountable circumstances, and certainly not benefit from the fortitude unleashed in me to answer my Lord's clarion call on my life, to use my failures as foundation for successes for myself and others. See, long before I arrived at the Los Angeles Superior Court as a judge, yes, 12 years ago today, perspectives were being changed. Conversations were started and collaborations between people, places, and things to bring me closer to my calling were initiated. The church, the Curries, who were my foster family, the court, and the military were all used to bring me from behind, behind the eight ball, that is. Each of them played a pivotal role in collaboratively transforming my life from a recipe of disaster into rocket fuel for success. Yet even with these unwavering reinforcements, I often found myself delayed on my purposeful mission by life's well-built minds constructed in unlikely places. Planning to thwart my potential, the enemy's minds were strategically placed to shut my mouth, break my heart, and tie my hands. Like many, I still had to tunnel through the darkness of my own depression, divorce, and the deaths of family members. Sometimes these minds came constructed by my own faulty judgment calls because I didn't know any better. And other times I knew better and stupidly proceeded anyway. Then once I paid really close attention, I heard in my spirit, 
that I already had everything I needed. Soon thereafter, I discovered my mother's 96 page typewritten manuscript entitled, The Plight of a Welfare Mother. What a wake up call I received about how much victimization my mother endured even before I was born. I actually realized just how blessed I was to be born at all. I also saw victimization differently too. My eyes were open to the pain of parents who live with the shame of why didn't I see that coming or could I have done more? Interestingly enough, I now see my mother as a shame survivor who was crazy like a fox. What a courageous woman she became to take the risk of recalling her wrongs in written form for lessons to be gained by the world long after she's gone. In today's code, I would say, hashtag mom used her voice to speak louder. Hashtag mom's manuscript was her show and tell. Hashtag mom had a perspective change. Hashtag mom started the conversation and hashtag courting with chance is our collaboration to break the bias. So in recalling my mom's life and reconciling my memoir with hers in my first book, I couldn't help but reflect on all those trips to the courthouse. My mother drug me along. It was during one of those trips that the seed of justice was planted in my heart because I recognized the significant power wielded by the judge who had the final say. Now I get the opportunity to help people break the bias daily. I use teams and transparency as my guide to help men, women, boys, and girls change their perspective and open their mouths to start the difficult conversations about the shame they carry as silent victims of sexual perversion, mental illness, domestic violence, lack and neglect. Also, I endeavor to encourage them to recognize that shame they endured, that shame doesn't belong to them. Finally, I work to teach them to consider that their purpose is tied to all that they have endured. I've also been compelled to ask myself some questions like, what are the chances that I survived all the craziness of my childhood to become a judge? And as life is, after getting an answer to that question, more questions arose some even more difficult than I could decipher or answer. For example, back in 2015, the original concept of me presiding over a new mental health court entitled the Community Collaborative Court was presented to me the first week I returned from bereavement leave after burying my 21-year-old son, Brandon. After the request was asked of me, two questions resonated so profoundly inside of me. The first was, what are the chances that I would be selected to dispense justice to defendants who are differently able, given Brandon was differently abled? And then the second was, what are the chances that my community collaborative court program participants would be those who suffer from mental illness, drug addictions, chronic homelessness, sexual exploitation, former foster youth, and veterans, all areas that I actually survived as a child and a young adult. Now with time, distance, strength, and vision, I see these traumatic events as show and tell opportunities and ways for me to speak louder, to help others have a hashtag perspective change, hashtag start the conversations and hashtag collaborate to break the bias in their lives. Members of the Optical Women's Association, for those of you who have heard my story and are confused as I was, about whether you're called to a particular group to help them break the bias because of your past, your parents' past, or even your present state of problems, consider that you survive to thrive and bring others from behind. Your story may not be as intense as mine, but it is your story of triumph nevertheless. Trust God that he can turn the mess of your past into a message for somebody else's present and future. So when the haters come, because they shall, and they tell you that you don't matter because of who you are or your past, put them on notice that it is precisely who you are and your past that makes you usable. I'm a living witness that God will use 
who you are and everything you've been through to break the bias. On this International Women's Day, I would be remiss if I did not speak the names of the women who came alongside of me on my journey, supported me, showed me or told me how to break the bias. In addition to my mother, Mabel Ackerson, they are Mary Keys, Mabel Penrice, Kim Slack, Aura Keys, Dorothy Curry, Claudia Curry, Patricia Bayard, Monique Coleman, Sharon Gildeen, Beverly Bianas, Professor B, Sheila Howard, Patricia Russell McLeod, Beth Belzer, Bernadette Harris Brody, Liberta Robinson, Selena McQueen, Sylvia Johnson, Kimberly King, Cecile Brazil, Eleanor Vaughn, Judge Consuela Marshall, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Judge Sandra Brown Armstrong, and Marilyn Haywood. This evening, I have challenged you to be unified and steadfast in your collective power and when necessary, speak louder. I've also challenged you to look for opportunities to show and tell, gain a perspective change, start the conversations and collaborate to break the bias. And finally, I challenge you to take the time this week to speak the names of the women who came alongside of you supported you, showed you, and told you how to break the bias. Now, I leave you with a shout out to you, for you are the one who's sharing your light in a genuine way to help those break the bias. You're the one who can elevate women in your sphere of influence. Thank you for elevating them to be as you are. Awesome women, brilliant women, creative women, dignified women, eye-opening women, funny women, graceful women, hard-working women, incredible women, joyous women, king and queen-making women, leaning in women, more than enough women, negotiating women, optimistic women, phenomenal women, queenly women, rising women, sight-giving women, tremendous women, unique women, victorious women, warrior women, and last but not least, double for your trouble, Zenith Optical Women's Association Women. Thank you for inviting me to celebrate this International Women's Day with you. Great evening and God bless you all. Sharing that with us.